Hi, my name is Tanya Lee Stone, and I'm the author of Almost Astronauts and Courage Has No Color. The earliest memory I have of writing a story is actually an entire series of little chapter books called Henry the Happy House. And it came with all kinds of awful illustrations. And I used to write these stories about Henry the Happy House over and over and over. All kinds of adventures. This um, stagnant, static building seemed to go on. <laughs> I think the part of Courage Has No Color that I'm really the most proud of is tracking down as many stories and anecdotes and photographs from as many of the men um, or families of the men that I could find. It was a lot of detective work. Sometimes I was on Zappa search looking for relatives of deceased men and just cold calling them um, because a lot of people just didn't even have computers and really kind of collecting and um, creating an archive of materials that didn't exist before because it was such a little known story and also because the materials, um, including photographs of black soldiers from World War II, are very, very minimal because the people archiving them at the time didn't think that they were that important. So I think that's what I'm the most proud of is really actually kind of creating an archive that didn't exist before. I think the best readers for this book are probably in two different categories. One is a category of reader who loves history and loves to learn about the stories of people who did cool things. And the other is the person who doesn't yet understand that history is stories of really cool people doing interesting things. Um, one of the things I try to achieve in my nonfiction is to sort of get across that idea that history is really nothing more than stories about amazing people doing interesting things. Um, and so if I can hook that reader who doesn't even get that yet, and then they love history, then that's fantastic. I think the best piece of advice I've been given is to listen carefully and actively, um, to let people get to know me and trust me when I'm interviewing them, before I'm interviewing them, sort of hang back, um, not push any opinion or point of view or agenda on people, um, so, sort of let them get a sense of who I am, and then really actively listen to what they're saying, because often what they're saying will lead me in directions of questions that I may not have known to ask before I spoke with them. One of the most memorable responses that I've had was to Almost Astronauts um, by one of the women that are profiled, who's profiled in it, Janora Jessen. So when I was um, gathering my information on these women and interviewing them, Janora was the one who sort of said to me, well, I'll answer your questions, but this is something I did a really long time ago for a really short time, and I don't really understand what all the fuss is about. Like, and and she, she even said, I kind of feel like a fraud when people ask me for my autograph. And so I said, okay, you know, fair enough. Um, and when the book came out, I had actually sent her, a full, I had sent each of them full manuscripts to read. When she read the full manuscript, she called me and she said, I actually never realized what part I had played in the women's movement. And is it too late to jump on that bandwagon? That was fantastic because she, she really didn't understand it until I had laid out all the pieces of it and sort of shown what role these women played in, in just moving the space program forward. And the other I would have to say is the day that Courage Has No Color came out, um, or I should say the day after Courage Has No Color came out because it was Walter Morris's birthday. And um, he's the hero in Courage Has No Color and a man who I got to know over the course of the 10 years that it took me to put that book together. So we were pretty close at that point, and I was close to his daughter, 
Um, and we were speaking every couple of weeks just to say hello, you know, because he, he was pretty elderly. It was his 92nd birthday. So um, I called him to wish him a happy birthday, and there was a house full of people there, some of the other triple nickelers, and they were just hooping and hollering and, and shouting about how great it was that this book was out for his birthday. And just to hear his voice and how happy it made him to have his story finally be told, that was incredible. It was incredible. I hope so, but I could probably also be potentially annoying at a dinner party because I have all these kinds of crazy anecdotes and stories and trivia of things that I've learned because really what I get to do is wake up every day and learn new things. And that's what gets me excited. So I'm always learning weird things that people don't necessarily know. So when a topic will come up, I will, I'll sort of be like, and did you know that blah, 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 blah. So, I, you know, depending on your point of view, I could either be really entertaining at a dinner party or sort of like, when is that research geek going to stop telling us all of these little stories about, you know, who invented the mobile? Yeah. <laughs>